Hi there. Okay, it's time to put the record straight about Michael Knighton. He's not buying Manchester United Football Club. No, he's the man who's bringing together the investors with the money. It's the consortium who will try to buy our beloved football club, not Michael Knighton. But Knighton is the man making things happen while safeguarding the interests of the fans by demanding 25.1% of shares will be ring-fenced for fan ownership. And knew the fans have a big role to play by helping to force the Glazers to sell. That's it. That's the story. In the meantime, the consortium do support the ongoing peaceful protests. The protests do make a difference. But what about this knight and guy, I hear you say? What's his credibility? Well, let me tell you this. While most of the media have been supportive of Michael Knighton this time around, it's mainly the trolls on the internet who've dug up negative stories. Some of the big football fan channels clearly influenced by the tabloid campaign to discredit Knighton that we saw back in 1989 when he agreed a £20 million deal to buy Manchester United. What you probably don't know is that the real facts about the real Michael Knighton are all in this book independently written by the hugely respected Philip Vine. No one involved in 1989 has ever challenged a single word written in this book. Why? Because it's the truth. The book is called Visionary because Knighton's blueprints laid the foundations for Manchester United Football Club to become a commercial juggernaut during the three years he was on the board at Old Trafford. He'd only previously stepped down as chairman and owner after a toxic media campaign led by Mirror Group newspapers. You can read all about that in the book. I've personally worked in the media for the past 45 years, not just with big broadcasters like ITV, BBC and others. I also spent three decades writing for national newspapers. So I know exactly how the media can paint a false interpretation of the truth. But today, it's some of the unregulated football fan channels that do the most damage. They draw you in every day with their clickbait gossip. Don't get me wrong, there are some really good, honest channels out there. But some will say absolutely anything to get an audience. And that is confusing to many ordinary fans. They just want to know what's going on. So let me give you some hard facts. I spent more than two years getting to know Michael Knighton because I wanted to know the real story about the real Michael Knighton. It's for that reason I'm the only media person Michael trusts with the full story and the facts behind the current bid to build a consortium. That's why I've been shown the evidence that a bid is currently being prepared by a multi-billion pound investment company in the City of London. Michael Knighton has shown me documents and correspondence. He knows I'm an old school journalist one of a rare, dying breed. And my word is my bond. I won't reveal confidential information I've been given in confidence. Meantime, I've seen enough to know this consortium is real. And things are currently looking positive insofar a bid is being prepared. Will it go the full distance? We'll have to wait and see. So what can I tell you about the consortium? This consortium, brought together by Michael Knighton, is currently 100% British. It's backed by three British-born billionaires. I'm calling them the Silent Knights. Silent Knights because they are silent benefactors who want to remain anonymous. But they all share one desire, to get the Glazers out of Manchester United Football Club. Fronting the bid, when it's made public, will be an investment company in the City of London. They are the guys who will be the public face of the consortium when they're ready to make an announcement, as things stand. They'll be the ones answering all the big questions, but there's still time for more big investors to come on board, because it's not just about getting the greedy Glazers out of the football club. Money will be needed to fix the stadium and the team. I'm pretty sure the Glazers will want top dollar when they eventually do decide to sell. We all know the asking price will be far in excess of the club's current stock market valuation of between 1.5 and 1.75 billion pounds. We do know they've previously turned down 4 billion. But since then, the value of Manchester United Football Club has been damaged 
by a prolonged lack of success. It's been damaged by fan groups targeting club sponsors. And then there's the protests, which will continue. The 1958 group have built momentum on that front, and it's clear the 1958 must continue to set the agenda if protests are to remain coordinated and effective. I do confess my last video with Michael Knighton has prematurely raised expectations that a formal bid is closer than it actually is. So I do apologise to the investment management company for doing that before they're ready. But I must stress that videos I've previously filmed with Michael Knighton over the past few months are what initially attracted some of these money men to join the consortium in the first place. And I do know more business brains are waiting in the wings to give their help if needed. What you all need to remember, I'm not just any filmmaker. I'm a lifelong fan of Manchester United Football Club. I grew up on the Stratford end in the 60s, watching George Best, Dennis Law and Bobby Charlton after my dad Ron and my uncle Tony Gubber first started taking me to Old Trafford as a young boy. This football club is in my blood. And when I hear Michael Knighton talk about trying to do what's best for Manchester United and our global army of Red Devils, that's the side I'm doing my best to promote as a publicist, as a filmmaker, and most importantly, as a lifelong fan. We want our club back, so please get behind the consortium and ignore any negative stories you may have seen that deflected attention this week from the real story. I'm sure the Glazers PR team have done their best this week to deflect attention by trying to distract fans with misleading stories about Michael Knighton. But I must say, much of the media seem to be loving what Michael Knighton is saying about the Glazers and the way they've neglected our football club. Surprisingly, it's certain so-called fan channels who've been the most dismissive of Michael Knighton's prospects of bringing about regime change at Manchester United Football Club. So let me say this directly to Manchester United supporters. Either you want the Glazers out or you don't. And if you do want new owners, then the consortium wants your help. A common theme throughout my films with Michael Knighton has been the message that we need all fans to be united in support of the consortium. A universal demand for new owners can only help those trying to buy the club. So ignore the doubters and those in the media who don't care whether or not our club recovers from our current position. If you want to show you're behind this consortium, please like and share this video. You can also stay in touch with me and give me encouragement to carry on supporting this movement if you register on my website at manunitedthereligion.com. But most importantly, don't always believe everything you hear and everything you read. Do your own research. And if you really want to know the truth about 1989, read this book. In it, you'll see Michael Knighton had support from the most respected men in Scotland's financial institutions. That included the late Sir Angus Grossart, one of Scotland's most successful businessmen at the time, and head of his own merchant bank. Noble Grossart is quoted confirming that Michael Knighton did have the funds in 1989, and he was not reliant on the businessmen the media claimed pulled out and scuppered his deal. They were sacked when they made unreasonable demands because Michael didn't need their money. He had his own and the backing of the bank in Scotland. But that's all history. This new fight for ownership of Manchester United is all that matters now. And Michael's role is that so far, he's been the catalyst to get this consortium together. Before I move on, guess who was leading the toxic campaign to discredit Michael back in 1989? The one and only Robert Maxwell, owner of the powerful Mirror Media Group. He was jealous because he wanted to buy Manchester United Football Club himself. But Maxwell didn't have the money, and the history is the proof that Maxwell was a fraud as well as a bully. He stole millions out of pension funds and then was found at the bottom of the ocean after mysteriously falling off his boat. The same Robert Maxwell 
whose daughter, Jelaine, was recently jailed for aiding the convicted paedophile, Jeffrey Epstein. Thank God the Maxwell family never got their hands on Manchester United Football Club. And you can thank Michael Knighton for helping to save us from that misfortune back in 1989. Right, now it's important to send a positive message to the British consortium who want to buy our football club. It's important they know you, the fans, want their help, that you do want them to carry on. Originally, I was going to spend most of this video tearing apart misinformation broadcast on Thursday by Stephen Housen, a man I once promoted to an audience of over 100 million viewers on state television in China. Stephen does do some good work, and I do like some of his insight. But on this story, he's got it totally upside down and inside out, like a number of clickbait chasing fan channels. I could tear apart Housen's video that he called the truth about Michael Knighton line by line, but I'd only be adding oxygen to comments based on fake news. Instead, I gave Michael Knighton Stephen Housen's mobile phone number so he could call him up and tell him in person how his video was so ill-informed. Housen has spent an hour spreading the most libelous views I've ever heard in all my years in the media, though it's not the first time he's guilty of getting things horrendously wrong. But let's finish on a positive note and a reminder of what the real story actually is. Michael Knighton is not buying Manchester United Football Club. He's the man who's bringing the consortium together while safeguarding the interests of the fans by demanding 25.1% of shares will be ring-fenced for fan ownership. It's the consortium who will provide the money and the bid to buy our football club. And you, the fans, have a big role to play by helping to force the Glazers to sell the football club. That's it. That's the story. So please show your support. If we all work together, we will get our club back. We